So this is a really cool video that is a hybrid between a Cricut cutting machine, sublimation slash infeasible ink, and even glass etching. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael, and to make this happen today, we will be using a Cricut cutting machine. We will also be using a Cricut mug press like this one right here. Uh, we will also be using infusible ink. Now, this process that I'm about to show you is pretty exciting, or at least it is for me. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, but I'm gonna be using infusible ink, but you can definitely swap this out for actually sublimation. We will also be using a file from crafty.net. So let's go ahead and hop over here real quick. And here is that file right here. So this is the leopard print pattern and the sheer fact that we could go in here, download this as well as up to like over 18,000 other files. And that includes sublimation files, SVG cut files, fonts, I mean, you name it, and not pay anything more than $9.99 per month. It's just honestly so insane. It's like saving crafty.net members so much money. Like everybody knows that money is tight and this is saving y'all so much of that money. Plus the fact that there is over 1,000 new files being added monthly, it's like, you never run out of inspiration. It's just so freaking good. And it's the exact reason so many people are switching over from their other unlimited memberships over to crafty.net. So what I'm gonna do is come in here. I wanna make sure that the SVG file version of that is selected and do a one-click download like so. And let's hop over here to Cricut Design Space. And as you can see, it is already uploaded here on our screen. Now, I'm really excited about this process, y'all, because what we're gonna do is actually wrap one of these frosted sublimation beer can glasses, like this one right here, with you know infusible ink, or again, you could use sublimation, up to you, completely up to you, same process overall, ultimately. Uh, but then we're gonna go in here and actually etch our design. We're gonna etch a leopard print pattern into that glass, into that sublimated glass, and the end result will blow y'all's minds. I'm obsessed with it, so be sure that you stay tuned for that. Let's go ahead and basically map out a template for our beer can glass. Now, for something like this, I have already pre-measured this, and this is five inches tall, and as far as the width, this is 9.75 inches. So let's go in here to Cricut Design Space and open up a shape to create a template for that. We'll go in here and lock that proportion, and then put in here the five for the, for the height. There we go. Awesome sauce. So what we're gonna do is actually go ahead and cut this template out onto the actual infusible ink, but we're also gonna use that to go ahead and slice and dice our leopard print pattern. Now, obviously we cannot etch in different colors, or at least we're not going to today. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and hide that layer with the brown, like so. Let's go ahead and right click that, click on bring to front, and then let's go ahead and resize this. All right, so I'm really liking that sizing. Before I slice this out though, I'm gonna come in here, right click this, click on duplicate, and then let's go ahead and position this back into place and click and drag over both of those layers and then come down here and click on slice. All right, so we don't need that. We also don't need this. And what we are gonna be using instead is like this right here, this layer as a template. So what we'll do is cut this out onto vinyl and then we will be able to actually wrap that around our cup after it has been sublimated or infused with the infusible ink. Um, and then we'll go ahead and etch this into that glass. So let me go ahead and come up here to the top right, click on make it. And this is wanting to put this onto the same mat since it is like the same color. However, I want to switch that up a little bit. Let me go ahead and click on this three little dots, click on move object, click on new for the mat. And we can just put in here white, that's fine. It, really any color is fine as long as you remember that this is for the infusible ink and this is for the vinyl for the stencil. Let's go ahead and click on continue. Now for that infusible ink, I am using this Animal Brights pattern pack, this right here. I just really love the little rainbow leopard print pattern that's in here. Now for those who may be new to all this and you may not really understand what is infusible ink, what is a sublimation, basically infusible ink is Cricut's version of sublimation. So with sublimation, you can really go in with a sublimation printer and print out really nearly anything that you want and then sublimate that into a polyester material. With Cricut's Infusible Ink, these are pre-packaged sheets that already have a pattern or a color on them that you can instead cut out with your Cricut and then do the exact same thing. You can press that or infuse that into a polyester garment as well. And you are going to cut this with the pattern or the color side facing up. 
Now, could I actually go in here and just trim this out by hand? Yeah, I definitely could. However, I will also say this is just a lot easier to make sure that you get a very clean cut. I'm also gonna come over here for our materials, click on browse all materials, and then just do a search for infusible. And then the infusible ink transfer sheet, done. And then let's go ahead and cut this out. You may notice that it does say, make sure that the mirror is turned on and the material is ink side up. That is important to make sure that it is, it is mirrored, but we are cutting out just a rectangle, so that doesn't really matter. I'm also gonna go ahead and grab a lint roller and just go over this cup real quick. It's just to make sure that there's no dirt, lint, or anything like that on the cup. And then we are gonna get a really good transfer of that ink onto the cup itself. We just don't want anything like standing in the way of the ink getting to the cup. All right, so I have trimmed out around the design, and what I'm actually gonna do that's different than what you would normally do with infusible ink is I'm actually gonna go in here and actually peel the transfer sheet, the carrier sheet, off of the ink itself. So we have just the ink by itself without that carrier sheet. Now the reason that that is important is that it seems like the infusible ink can get a little weird whenever you're applying it to something inside of a mug press when you're also using these little silicone mug wraps, this is from PYD Life. I found these and just fell in love with them, you guys. Basically, they were suggested to me on Amazon, and you can basically use this to wrap around items to make them fit inside of the Cricut Mug Press. I ordered those things so fast, like it would give you whiplash, so freaking fast. I have since went ahead and looked online, looked at some, some videos. I saw that Angie Holden has a video on using this stuff. And you know, to be honest, I've even done a video in the past where I was trying to sublimate onto glass items and sublimating on glass with my Cricut Mug Press, it broke my Cricut Mug Press. Other people have had the same issue. Some people have not had that issue, but it seems to be at least common enough to at least raise some red flags. However, I have been running some tests with using these little mug wraps with a glass item like this and i have not had any issues as of yet so so far so good we'll keep our fingers crossed however if you decide to stick a glass item like this into your cricket mug press despite what i say please do so at your own risk knowing full well what's possible all right so i'm going to take my little cutout here and basically wrap this around our cup It just seems that with that carrier sheet and with that infusible ink sheet and with that silicone wrap from PYD Life, it just seems that like with all that moisture and everything that it just, it can't deal. It can't, it can't deal with it. And so the, the cup or the surface can come out a little splotchy sometimes from what I found. And I believe Angie Holden even had a similar outcome with hers. All right, so I have pulled this tight and wrapped it all the way around this. I'm even gonna go down the center, like this little seam as well, just to hold all the pieces together. And yes, sometimes I can be a little excessive with the tape, I fully realize that. I'm also gonna take one of the butcher sheets that came with the infusible ink, and I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna go to wrap it around our cup and then just trim off the excess. And basically this part just helps protect any kind of ink from blowing out and onto your machine or anywhere that it's not supposed to be. Now I'm gonna grab my little, my little mug wraps here. It does come in three different sizes. So I'm gonna grab the one like that's in the middle. I guess like the medium. <laughs> we'll go ahead and wrap it around here. And again, do this at your own risk. Let me go ahead and pull this over. Now this particular glass is a little too tall for this mug press. So what we're going to, have to do is actually go ahead and insert this in, we'll press it. Then we'll go ahead and actually flip it around and rotate it around to press the back side. Then we'll flip it upside down, press it, and then flip it around again and press it again. I'm also just a little paranoid about actually letting the, the glass touch the mug press. I'm just worried about it doing something weird again. So what I'm going to do is just actually stick a little a little plastic popsicle dispenser really quick because I mean, it's plastic and it will melt. But I'm gonna lay this down to the, onto the bottom little plate of the mug press. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put this down with the edges of this little wrap. 
facing outwards. Once you have it in place, go ahead and push it down and then I'm gonna go ahead and slide this out. And while that is doing its thing, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out our template for our, our glass etching cream. And let's go ahead and just remove the excess vinyl real quick and everything that's not part of our design. All right, so this is done. As you can see, all the little white lights up here are filled. Let's go ahead and remove this. And what I'm wanting to do is go ahead, take this. You can see that the seam is facing outward right now. Let me go ahead and flip that around to where the seams are facing towards the back. Be sure that you're wearing some heat resistant gloves. Make sure that that's wrapped around nice and tight. We're gonna use the whole popsicle method again and flip it back in here again with the edges of this wrap sticking outwards. Go ahead and clamp this down and remove our little stick. Now it is pretty rare that whenever you go to repress this, once you flip it around, it's rare that the Cricut will actually want to do a full countdown. So what we'll do is we should go in here and set a timer for two minutes. All right, so the timer is up. Let's go ahead and bring this back over here. I'm just gonna hold on to the glass, lift up the lid and pull it out like so. Now, since this is a taller glass and actually too tall to be actually pressed inside the mug press, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and just flip this over. We'll go ahead and do like the seam side facing out again, wrap this around. And I'm just making sure that the actual silicone wrap is at the bottom side of that cup. Just making sure that we get all the pressure exactly where we need it. Now let's go in here, put it in the little, little popsicle stick again, lay this down, close the lid, remove the stick, and then again, it can be a little hit and miss on if it's gonna to want to do the full countdown. Just to be on the safe side, I am gonna go in here and set a timer for four minutes. So since this is the first time we flipped this over and we really haven't gotten anything or any heat down here at the very bottom, we'll just do a full press for four minutes. And when we flip it around again, it'll be two minutes. All right, so now we have our transfer tape to apply down to our vinyl. And I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the backing paper off of this vinyl. All right, let's go ahead and remove this. All right, so again, we're gonna go ahead and flip this around so that we are still working on the same end of the cup, but now just on the opposite side. So just flip that around completely. And since we have already been working on this end of the cup, we don't need the full four minutes, we'll just do two minutes. And in all honesty, a wooden popsicle stick would probably work so much better than a plastic one in a hot machine. All right, let's go ahead and pull this one out. All right, so here is our glass that is all sublimated with our leopard print pattern. So what we're gonna do now is once this cools off just a little bit, I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna apply down our actual other leopard print pattern, but we'll just be using this to apply our Armor Etch glass etching cream. Right, so I'm basically just wrapping this around our glass. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as there are any bubbles smoothed out that is on the border of one of these cutouts where it's showing through to the glass. We would wanna make sure that that is completely smoothed out. All the other little bubbles out here in no man's land, like towards the middle of the stencil, those can be there, that's fine. But if it's on the border or part of the vinyls lifted right here around the stencil, then that is a no-go. All right, so now I'm gonna take some Armor Edge glass etching cream and shake this up really, really well. You also wanna grab some little safety glasses just to make sure that nothing splashes up in your eyes. Now, one of my favorite methods on actually applying the Armor Edge glass etching cream is basically to go in here and you wanna put on a layer and just keep that layer moving. You wanna be going across this entire cup, all of the little cutouts, everything for a full five minutes. Then put on another layer for 15 minutes Rinse it off and you're done. Now, you might be thinking right about now, Michael, frosted glass looks like etched glass. Why didn't you just cut out the design from the infusible ink? And then you could see the frosted glass through that. And you could do that. However, whenever you are etching out this frosted glass, it doesn't give you an etched glass look. Instead, it removes that frosted coating, that powder coating on the actual glass itself. 
and makes it where it's completely see-through, like completely visible. It looks so freaking cool. Now I gotta say that my original idea and my little prototype for this process was actually with like more of like a mermaid style pattern and I was actually etching in mermaid scales onto the cup. And I showed it to my friend Crystal Ann over at Design Bundles and she for one loved it, but two, she's like, oh my gosh, like you need to do a leopard print pattern and then etch in the leopard print. I'm like, so this is all her idea. I can't take credit for it but I, I think it's gonna turn out amazing. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. All right, so the timer is up. Let's go in here and do one final coat and we'll let that set for 15. Hey, real quick, if you are new around here, consider stamping that subscribe button and ringing that little bell for all of the notifications if you want to learn how to best use your Cricut or how to do sublimation. Also, if you liked the video, maybe you learned something new, consider stamping that like button and dropping comments down below. That would be so appreciated and helps us out so much here on this channel. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you just for watching. We love y'all to the freaking moon and back and until next time, stay crafty.